It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I am your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. I don't know if anybody's listening. <laughs> I think we might have lost everybody. Okay. Okay, let's see why that's over there. Okay, ba ba ba. We're going. Ah, oh, brother. Hey, one thing after another around here. Okay. All right, show's brought to you by Subash Technosis. Go to subashtechnosis.com and, um, you can, they, they'll help you out with the, uh, what do you call it, uh, search engine optimization, um, website design, call center, uh, data entry, uh, press release writing, content writing, uh, social media marketing, all kinds of stuff they can help you with over there at subashtechnosis.com. Be sure and mention the Opperman Report or Ed Opperman or even Ed because uh, I've known Subash for quite some time, and um, we practically now chat all day long. Another wonderful guy never leaves me alone. <laughs> you know, I swear. I swear. Why do people think it's okay to message me during the show? But anyway, I digress. I digress. Coming up tomorrow, we have uh, Dr. Ted Noel, and he's going to be talking about his observations of Hillary and her symptoms. Then after that, we have Gary. No, Gary Burns comes comes on first, who is the Secret Service agent. He's going to discuss um, the Secret Service reaction uh, to Hillary Clinton's medical event there on September 11th, with that, which I find all very interesting. Okay. Now, a couple of things I want to say about this Hillary Clinton business. One is um, this business about uh, how they, they're they claiming it was pneumonia, okay, and that she had walking pneumonia. Well, when you listen to Dr. Noel, the, the, the symptoms don't look like pneumonia, either like she collapsed or fainted. See, I was thinking that it was a hangover, and even wrote about this on Facebook, because if you looked, her hair wasn't done that morning. You know, and she was wearing those weird blue sunglasses. And we found out through Dr. Noel that uh, those sunglasses are specific to uh, people who have seizures, wear those kind of blue sunglasses that uh, helps to prevent seizures. And there even used to be a video on YouTube that showed a guy having a seizure. They put those sunglasses on him and the seizure stopped. Okay, guys? So there's a lot going on with this. A lot more, you know, a lot of people are criticizing me about having Dr. Noel on. They haven't even heard the video. They haven't even heard the interview yet. And they're, they're nagging me and telling me, oh, one guy, Ed jumped the shark. Okay, listen to the interview. Okay, going into the interview, I thought that it was a hangover. Because when someone shows up at work in the morning and they got glass, sunglasses on, they, they haven't, they got, their hair's all greasy, they haven't done their hair and they're stumbling around, I, I assume that it's a hangover. They were drunk all night. That's my first assumption. And I've had thousands of employees, you know. I had a company, and I had 100 employees at one time. During the Christmas season, we would have 100 employees. I had an office, a bunch of satellite locations. So I'm pretty good at hiring people and seeing, you know, evaluating, you know, people showing up in the morning hungover. I've seen it enough. But they claim it's pneumonia. And then they had Robbie Mook come on. And what's he say? He goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> I had pneumonia too. As a matter of fact, oh, we all caught that. It was going around the office. We all had this pneumonia. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You know? But it's not that funny. Because if she had pneumonia, right? And Robbie Mook, according to him, also had pneumonia. He caught it too. And people, other people, senior staffers in the office, <laughs> had pneumonia too. What is she doing? If she has pneumonia, and she knew, that, according to her, she knew the day before she was diagnosed with pneumonia. 
that instead of when they throw her in this van, she loses her shoe, which should be a major story just to begin with. You know, how, how many presidential candidates lose their shoe? <laughs> you know, but, you know, when I'm a kid, you know, watching following politics, that would be a big story and all by itself. But no, not with Hillary Clinton. No, she's like, oh, ho, ho, nothing wrong with nothing to see here. Allegedly, you know. Some almost had a fainting spell. Almost, you know, they were playing it down like ridiculously. She lost her shoe. She had to be picked up off her feet and carried in there. So we're going to be talking about all this tomorrow. But the part about the the contagious pneumonia is very interesting to me because if she knew she had this pneumonia the day before, and then she has a pneumonia spell where she passes out from dehydration, instead of going to the hospital, they take her to Chelsea Clinton's apartment. And they say, oh, ho, 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 ho. As soon as she got up there, she was chasing around her grandchildren. Chasing, she's chasing around grandchildren. She's got, no, she's got pneumonia. <laughs> what is she doing chasing around? Chelsea Clinton's kids, I looked it up. One of them is three months old. The other one is 14 months old. Not too hard to catch a 14 month old. <laughs> you pretty much chase them down. They can barely, you know barely walking in a year but the thing is um who the hell if you have pneumonia and according to robbie mook they were all caught the pneumonia so in her head she must have thought it was contagious pneumonia i know a lot of people oh i'm ed i'm a nurse i'm a i'm a, I'm a, I'm a dentist uh, not all pneumonia is contagious i understand that okay and now they're saying she has a medical report supposedly Saying that her brand of pneumonia was not contagious, but well, and that which conflicts with Robbie Mook saying that he caught it too. There's a, one of someone here. There's a mistake someplace here, right? With this pneumonia story, something's up. That we can all agree on. That something's something's rotten in Clint Mark, you know. So what's the deal here now? Let's say I got pneumonia, right? I'm, I'm told yesterday I was diagnosed yesterday with pneumonia. Now, and the doctor says to me, well, you know what? It's not contagious pneumonia, right? But I, other people at work have the pneumonia, according, unless they're lying, unless Robbie Mook is a big fat liar, right? I'm going to say to myself, well, you know what? I'm not going to go around my little infant grandchild and chase around my little toddler grandchild because they could catch what I got. Because we know another guy got it. Maybe the doctor's wrong. You ever think of that? Don't you take those kind of precautions in life when you're, when you're around little infants and toddlers? You kind of say, well, hey, you know what? Maybe the doctor's maybe, you know, doctor made a mistake. Why chance it? You know? So you don't kiss your, you know, your, your kid. You don't hug them, you know? You don't, you know, you wash your hands a little bit extra because you don't want other people around you to get sick. But no, 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 not Hillary Clinton. No, no, no. For, for some reason... Uh, when she has this episode, they don't throw, you know, they don't take it to the emergency. How did they know? How did they know? How did they know? How did these Secret Service agents know that it wasn't a dart, like a, 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 that she wasn't hit <laughs> with a, a blowgun? How do they know? How do they know? How did they know at that moment that when she's twitching out and collapsing and dropping metal things out of her pant leg, whatever's going on with that, it's a whole other story. How did they know it wasn't a Russian dart or an, an ISIS dart blowgun with poison tsetse fly on it? How did they know this? They don't know this. At that moment, they don't know. But they're not. They're not upset or shocked or nothing. No, they just. This is a, another day at the office for these guys, man. She must be passing out all the freaking time. She must be twitching out and spazzing out and doing whatever she's doing there, quite a bit. Okay, for these guys not to panic. All right. That's all I'm going to say about that. And then you got Bill Clinton goes on TV. And he goes, oh, yeah, she faints all the time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, then they got to fix that. Oh, no, no, he fainted twice. You know, and, oh, you know, I recall fainting once. No, I recall fainting. You know, I pretty much remember all the times I fainted. You know, so this woman, man, she's got all this kind of crap. We go into all this with Dr. Noel with, with this, uh, these glasses she got to wear, you know, with, with this prisms and stuff like that. And she fell down and hit her elbow and she passed out another time. Oh, another dehydration. What is going on with this woman? There's something wrong with her. And we're going to get into that tomorrow in detail. 
But real quick, now there's also an alleged theory going around that Dr. Drew was fired because um, uh, he dared to say we need to see more about uh, uh, Clinton's health. We need to look it into it further. Okay, uh, I... Uh, um, at one time, at one, okay, my agent did all the booking, did all the casting for Dr. Drew. The Octo Mom, you know, there was a time, every guest on his show we were involved with. So I'm very familiar with everything that goes on over there. I still have friends over there, some people I stay in contact with. Um, and what I'm hearing is, is that uh, this was weeks before, this decision was made weeks before Bill Clinton, I mean, uh, Dr. Drew went on TV and made that statement about the Clintons. One has nothing to do with the other. I know a lot of people are trying to say, oh, he was fired right over this. I do not believe that's the case. And I believe that based on information that's been passed over to me. Um, but also, too, the other way around. It's the other way around, okay? That um, I believe, from my experience with Dr. Drew and the Dr. Drew show and the people around him, is that he would... Um, cooperate with the most powerful person and go along, you know, to, to advance himself in any possible way that he could, that he would, um, he wouldn't, he would have, he would immediately say, Oh my goodness. Oh, ha ha ha. I, I never said that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it would be the, the whole other way around. Okay. That, um, he would be 100% support of Hillary Clinton. You know, if they said boo to him about this, Oh, Dr. Drew, you have to go back on TV and pull your pants down and make believe you never said that he would do it in a second. Uh, cause, and if you look, and you want to look into, if you don't uh, trust me and my opinions, uh, check out a guy named Jim Porman, P O O R M A N, who was a radio host, and he was the co-host of Loveline with Dr. Drew years and years and years ago. And check out what he has to say about Dr. Drew. Very interesting stuff. Look into that. Okay, what's next? What's next? Um, Trump comes out today. I uh, have a unique opinion about this, too. Trump comes out today and has all this stuff about it. He wants to promote his new hotel at the post office down there in Washington, D.C. Um, and he makes an announcement that uh, he now concludes that Barack Obama was born in the United States. The birther movement. See, that's why the show is called Takes a Village, Birthers, Body Doubles, Real Heroes, and Hope. Because I'm trying to end the show with a happy ending tonight, okay? Not one of those happy endings, but, you know, a happy ending. We're not getting a massage from, from good old Ed Hoffman. Maybe a brain massage you get there, right? Trump comes out and he says, I now believe that um, Barack Obama was born in the United States. And it was a little hemming and hawing this week. Did he want to say it? Did he not want to say it? Blah, blah, blah. And all these... The pundits are not saying, well, he had to do this because he wants to reach out to the African-American community. And, you know, and he's a good, blah, blah, blah. Here's my opinion on this. If you notice, my opinion on, on, on this whole thing about Trump, uh, Obama's paperwork, which is severely lacking in my opinion, um, but I don't buy all this stuff about this birther movement that he's Muslim, he's a Muslim terrorist and related to Malcolm X and all this crazy stuff people saying he somehow snuck into the White House and he's a subvert, you know, and that's craziness. Uh, my and, and and most of the people I've talked to about this believe he's a CIA creation. Cindy Sheehan, I talked to her about it. I talked to those K Street lawyer guys. I had them on here. Uh, the one about the the visas for Al Qaeda. Springman, I think his name was, and he even looked it up and found that one of the first places that Obama worked for out of college was a CIA front. So there, there's been, but I think everyone who's legit on this and um, has really looked at it and met him. You know, uh, all believe he's a CIA creation. The, all this stuff about, even the Muslim stuff, I don't believe. And he went to a Christian church. He was from Chicago. You know, come on, give me a break. Um, and I believe that, that Trump now probably did believe that. He probably did believe all that conspiracy stuff you hear on Alex Jones and all that kind of nonsense. And thought that uh, Obama was a Muslim terrorist and uh, his birth certificate that he wasn't born here in the United States. He was born in Kenya. And I think what changed Trump's mind was his security.